It's just a real pleasure to be here and to speak to everyone about uh, uh, lead services and locating the ones we don't know about. So I guess with my 40 years in the business and your 40 years, I think together maybe we have about 50 years. So why don't we, why don't we tell people what we think we know about lead service lines? That sounds good. I think everybody is well aware that we, uh, the U.S. officially banned the use of lead in, in lead service lines in 1986 is when it, when it ended. But the interesting note is that roughly half of the housing stock in the United States was built before 1980. And uh, I know for a fact with a majority of cities concentrated in the Midwest where our firm's headquarters is based, uh, there, there's a lot of lead services in systems out there today. You know, we, we take a look, I think the, the number that everybody has seen is 6 to 12 million in lead pipe. But you take a look at it at uh, someplace like D.C. Water, you know, just a couple of years ago, they estimated, oh, we've got about 12,000 lead pipes. That number is well past 30,000. So we're really finding uh, a, a very different landscape than even what was budgeted in, uh, in Biden's uh, infrastructure bill. Yeah, so Chuck, the big question is, how do you find out where the lead pay pipes are located, or are we just guessing? And, you know, Jack Dangerman actually helped us a lot in GIS, because what did he do? Well, because service connections were so hard to digitize, so what they basically did was take the point of the parcel in the centroid and have it go to the closest, closest water main. And what that did was that created a service line that really had nothing to do with reality. So uh, no information, no pipe materials. So what we really have are GISs that really haven't performed up there. So that's that's kind of our issue today. And I think everybody, every utility and every everyone here knows you really, well, you can, but you shouldn't be digging up pipe to replace pipe lead services just based on a desktop and that analysis or or a predictive model uh, you know uh, you need to use or we need to use technologies to find the where where is it located you know if you I think all of you probably remember back in 2020 the Water Research Foundation uh, did a report on this and did all kinds of technology assessments and they basically found no commercial product that was going to be able to find buried lead pipe. Yeah, and you know what that means? That, that means we dig, uh, we hydroexcavate, we pothole. And now we're hearing some of the states requiring X number of potholes because, because we don't have the maps, we don't have the as belts. So it's kind of a random thing when we start digging there. So it's, it's, uh, it's, you almost have to dig up the entire pipe. And some states are no longer allowing visual inspection to see what that is. All right, and then you know when we when we talk about excavating, potholing a couple three holes in someone's yard, and uh, we're doing the what I call the scratch and sniff or the scratch and see if a magnet sticks to it test. The problem with that is you're it, it's it's a small segment of a service line that could be anywhere from 30 to 60 plus feet long. So what if it's a repair or you guess wrong. That's the concern. Yeah, and, uh, you know, recently, I don't know if you've seen it, EPA has just published last month their guidelines to do an inventory. And interestingly, this thing called electric electrical resistance testing was included. So uh, they were finding because in studies, I think with uh, help from Boston Water and Sewer, this whole concept of electrical resistance and looking at this, funded that and actually found out that this was one of the things that worked to find differences between lead, copper, and galvanized steel. Interesting. All right, and I think, I think everyone here, as you look at the periodic table behind me, you all studied this in, in, in high school science and, and are all aware of that. And you can simply see that different materials have diff different resistivity the two predominant copper and, and lead, you can see the difference between the two of them and they're noticeable during elect 
electro, electronic t or electric testing, you can tell and see the difference. You know, it's, it's not the tech, it's like anything else. It's not the technology because now we know electric resistance, just like we see in leak detection, now, now can work. The problem is how do we deal with the challenges in the field? Uh, is the pipe pressurized? Is it unpressurized? Uh, is it, is it uh, accessible through a curbside or do you have to go through the basement? Uh, is it, uh, you know, how many bends will you have? And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge. Right, and, and we all know, and this is, this is in talking to, to customers across the country, people have been out there removing from desktop models and from everything else trying to remove lead. And unfortunately, they've re removed perfectly good copper or other type pipes, so they just spent extra money for no reason at all. And then the other fear is, what if you guessed wrong and the model's wrong and you left a lead pipe behind? So, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a true problem and a conundrum for all utilities in the United States. Yeah, so in looking at this thing, uh, you know, because we've been in the business a long time, you know, me passed with Hanson Software, you know, so, you know, we probably did a last count to 100 million work orders with this stuff, but how, how service connections either coming in from a curbside, we needed a ruggedized device that could handle both models. And so we really wanted to have a tool that could be easy uh, out, out and uh, used by the operators. Here's, here's a good example. Which pipe do you think we, we actually see the most of? It's not the straight line. See the blue line? If I'm a contractor, as we both know this and see it, and I've got 30 feet from my curb to the house, I want to install 50 feet of pipe because that's what I get paid for, right? So what we're finding is we're finding a lot of coiled uh, pipe at the end because that's how many feet that they've actually put in the ground. So, I mean, the challenge is for this thing to have a device that can actually do this is non-trivial. So, and, and not only are pipes not laid in a straight line as much as we'd like to believe from, from, from our GIS map, you know, when they lay a copper service or a lead service or when they lay to service, they've got to get around stuff. They, whether it's trees, some type of, of obstruction, it doesn't matter. It doesn't run straight to the street. It goes over this way and over this way, and you've got to navigate all those bends to, to work that line. You know, and, and what we were seeing a couple of years ago, we were going into to asbestos cement pipe, a cast iron pipe. And we started seeing these readings using this electric resistivity for leak detection. And we started seeing these spikes that were soldered lead joints. And so when we were coming up with actually identifying that, we needed to go ahead and do some other things for that. So the technology really had been out there for 10 years, but not applied to this thing. Right. And... You know, at, at, at Enemy Simpson Company, you know, for ourselves uh, being uh, a leak detection based company, you know, we've been using the electric scan both in wastewater and sewers and uh, in water systems now with, with great success. You know, so my big question to Chuck was, and I think other utilities like Boston and others were reaching out, can we make something that would go in a one inch and smaller pipe? Because service lines basically run, depending on age, from a half inch to one inch going to homes. Yeah. And that's our biggest group of services. And, and you know, and that's what I liked about electric. I mean, the science, this thing is so scalable. Um, you, you know, we look at acoustics, it, there's so many drawbacks on, a, on using acoustics. This is a non acoustic system. You know, you've got different flows, you've got different pressures, you've got different pipe materials, you've got repairs. Uh, you've got all these false positives, but the nice thing about electrical resistance testing for leaks and also for lead is it's so scalable. So that's what we kind of did. We created our probes down. You'll see one in, in the in the in the aisle here, just small enough to make it through those half inch pipes. Right. And we all know how difficult it is to access. And and this is probably the biggest issue with this. I know we have technology that can figure out the differences and find out what these unknown service lines that we have no record for are. The bigger problem is, is getting access to the house, getting an appointment with the homeowner, getting in their basement, as you can see in the video behind me, and getting downstairs, making sure you can get to the water meter. And here, it's a very simple process, removing the meter, and uh, we're going to, we're going to, 
ha we have an insertion tube that we're going to put on. We're going to do a pressure check first uh, off our insertion tube. We're going to we're going to use. We started out using uh, a, uh, a, a what I refer to as a simple 25% bleach solution for disinfectant, and uh, we now have a the tool has been modified. The insertion tube that you mount to the inlet side of the of the of the meter setting that uh, chlorinates as we feed the line in to the so we're always disinfecting as we go and so you can you can see there you know we were using bleach solution and rubbing rubbing the cable down as we as we put it in but now we've even come up with a little bit better mouse trap yeah and this is so when we say electricity this is six AA batteries. This is low voltage. This is 40 milliamps to the guys out there. So, and you bring up a great point. It's it's getting it in, making sure these are drinking water systems there. This is already past the materials and contacts in the UK. We've done a lot of the R&D uh, bringing this over there because they're, they are really up on their leak detection, also lead detection over there. So the ability to combine a footage encoder, how far we're going into the pipe, chlorination chamber, so that we can go ahead and have something that is clean coming in, coming out, uh, was really key. All right. And as you look at the graph over my shoulder behind me, you can see that when we have lead, the resistivity is, and we just did percentages to make it simple, it's reaching into the 80 plus percentile. And when we do copper, it goes even higher. We've got an example out front, but you can see the one on the left has almost nothing with it. And that's a piece of plastic pipe. And again, I'll sh I, I can show you outside uh, out front uh, after this uh, you, you know our first units were, were bought here in california not to find lead necessarily but to prove that they don't have lead uh and so you know having a customer says look uh, you know i'm worried about lead do i have it so having that ability so making the kit fully functional so a company like emmy simpson going out and doing projects uh, kind of in the country can do it and also sold directly to cities and utilities so they can just put it in their van and, and have that uh, it's a great kit, and it's very portable, very simple, whether a service provider does it, contract plumbing contractor, or the utility themselves does it. It's very easy. There's no excavation involved. The big issue, like I said, is getting that appointment and the home letting you in, because be very clear, when you do this, no matter what, the homeowner has to be home, whether you enter from a, from the curb, a meter box curb, or if you're in from the basement, that line still has to be flushed after you're done. And especially if you, you found lead, it's got to be flushed and it's got to be tested. So there's following EPA guidelines and rules. Use, it's very methodical. So there's a lot involved in this process. Well, and you know, it's always, this industry is always belt suspenders and duct tape to hold your pants. So what we, we've always got the engineer, well, okay, if there's lead, so prove it. So when we take our probe out, we'll do a 3M lead test, probably the highest rated lead test device. And so we confirm it right there and are able to have that data right ready for the client. So it amazes me too, the best part about this, it's, it's all technology based. So that tablet that you're collecting the information on is Bluetooth to the machine and that information is being cached on the tablet and heading straight to the cloud. And even if you're in the basement and you don't have a signal for the moment, the minute you walk upstairs and connect back to the network, all that information goes to the program and dumps into your database. So yeah. you have it right then and there. Exactly. And then all of the all of the images that you have, you've got that uh, on there. The report is ready. Uh, you've got an API. We're already going into Innovise, uh, Autodesk uh, package. Uh, going into GS so it can be attached directly to that service connection as well. Yeah. Right, and you know, just remember, and I'm, I think all of you are really aware, uh, what happened in Flint, Michigan was much less to do about the lead service lines and more to do with, with the water chemistry and bad actors that created a real nightmare and the lead leaching. But this is an important thing and everybody's aware the EPA says you will have this report done by October 16th of 2024, which is right around the corner. And this is a, you're gonna have to do that. Yeah. And, and you know, this is a Pandora's box. So right now the EPA 
and all the community development groups are focused on service laterals. But when we actually come up with high lead readings and no lead pipes, we're going to be moving upstream. So you've got asbestos out there. We've got lead solder joints, which are still being used today okay. by plumbers. Just go on YouTube and they'll tell you how to make lead ingots, also cast iron. So the ability of now finding and having that technology to automatically go upstream, that's a coming. So just between us, us girls here, we really need to understand this technology and start moving forward for that, for that, what's upstream for that and what may be causing it. And I think everybody here knows, uh, you know, it's an ominous message, but the EPA is out there. It's coming no matter how we slice this and there is going to be no relief. This is going to fall on the shoulders of all the water utilities in the United States. Right. Well, Matt, that, yeah. that wraps us up. Uh, you know, if you if you are looking for services, you're a small utility, you want to have the best service company provider around, Emmy Simpson, uh, email uh, michael at emmysimpson.com. I thank you very much, sir. It's been a lot of years with you. It's been a real pleasure. And, and of course, if you'd like to buy the unit or see the unit, come on out front. And you can always email directly to chuck at electroscan.com. And Chuck will happy to talk to you, but we appreciate all of your time and attention and the opportunity to talk to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.